sound of the ring off the hook. What episode is this? 83. I think. That's what I went, what I went with. 83. Yep. We're live? We are live. Nine seconds live. There it is. All right, nine seconds in. We are live. Check our metrics here real quick. Make sure we're not dropping anything. Everything looks plain up. Look at you, man. You took over the switchboard and everything. Mm -mm. You the man now? I'm not the man. I'm not the man. Hope to be the man after Friday. After not Friday. The <laughs> not the man. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. We got some... An event coming this Friday. It's a big... Uh, you know what? There's a lot for me to do before then. Like, I might have taken on more than I can handle. What do you mean? I'll smoke and barbecue and try to fish at the same time. It's going to get interesting. You think so? I mean, let's just hope my system works. So what you're saying is there's a chance that... There's a chance I may quit at noontime just to come up here and get the barbecue ready and let the fish that I already caught well, be enough. Well, that's what I'm saying. So there's a chance that you might not win because you had to come tend to the barbecue. No. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying it's going to be more of a Timmy Horton moment. Oh, Timmy Horton. So you, the Timmy Horton moment you're talking about is on... Uh, Champlain. Champlain. Where he ordered a pizza at 10.30 in the morning. 10.30. Drove to one spot, made five casts, and rode back. Yep. 80 miles, I think it was. Man. That sounds pretty uh, confident there, coming from old David Winters. I wish we had the other guys here to talk. So Shane couldn't be here tonight with us. He is, uh, can we say he's on a date with his wife? Uh, you know what? That's a fair. That's a fair statement. All right. She she wanted him to go attend something with her, and um, when you have a wife that lets you go and do, you kind of have to make time for that when she asks. I completely understand. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get it shared around. So just Chris give me Marshall, one second. I I'm not even gonna go there with that. What he ask? He said he's gonna go ahead and break the ice. I can't believe you're not gonna let Brandon be Joey's cameraman. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm getting started early. Chris, we got to get, get some time for people to get on here before we start talking all the smack. Mike Barber, I don't know what you're talking about with uh, Shane's first tournament with an A-rig, but um, I don't know. Shane's still pretty much anti-A-rig. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Almost done. What are you, going through the group that I already did? Probably. Oh, well, it is what it is. We'll just spam everybody. I think it'd be better to have Cookie in a boat with Sabaga anyway. Think so? I think the antics might be amped up a little bit more. I don't know. We might have to edit them out. That's all right. Cookie might bring his prototype power poles. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are on Matt McBee's boat, Tater's boat. <laughs> anyway, we got about 59 people on here. All right, so... Let's get cooking with a recap of this past weekend. So Shane's not here, but he did uh, he did win the um, uh, Jason Lands tournament on Sunday up at Lake Norman. I think he had four, was it fourteen fifty five or something like that, somewhere in the neighborhood. Fourteen and a half pounds. No um, neck. Hamrick finished second. Yep. Hamrick Hamrick and Hoover finished second. Um, I think on Saturday. Super 60, Cat Trail, what was up there? I think Derek won the Super 60. Or no, there was a Winter Trail. Derek may have won the Cat Trail. I don't know. Derek Cummings and his, said, and his boy. I don't know. Craig Chambers? I don't know if Craig or if – I don't know. I don't know who Derek was with. I know they won something this weekend. Okay. So, congratulations to those guys at Lake Norman. Um Looks like the weights might be heading in the right direction up there. You know, when it finally gets cold up there, you'll see 18, 19 pounds pretty regularly. Yes, so you will. They're starting to creep up. 
Um, Saturday down here, I fished the, is it technically called the Toys for Tots? Is that what they're calling No. Them? Fishing, casting for kids, or what is that? I don't remember it's what it's It's a tournament called. that benefits. I always call it Toys for Kids tournament. Okay. They, they take underprivileged kids in Gaffney, Spartanburg area, yep. Christmas shopping with the money they raise. Yep, so Ron Farrow's uh, um, business sweetened the deal this year. They, they guaranteed $1,000 to first place, which I'm sitting beside the guy that won. Um, I got my butt kicked. We had eight and a half pounds. Weighed him just, just to say I knew what I had. Yep. Um, it was fun, though. I mean, that's Christmas, the first. Christmas for kids. Matt Christmas Queen. for kids. Yep. There we go. Um, I'll give you my rendition of the day and then let David talk because he, he was able to to take that $1,000. Um, but we we threw a jerk bait from takeoff to weigh in. And we take off it. We took off at around seven. We kind of, that's that one ends early, um, and it ends early because they have actually kids that fish it, right? So they try to keep the tournament hours kind of short. There, there were some kids that fished it, and I think they they got a raffle that takes a while, and yeah, and they provide hot dogs for everybody too. So yeah, so it's over at one. Um, so the afternoon bite, you know, everybody that's familiar with Lake Wiley, it kind of dies around what 10 11 o'clock and then it really doesn't get going again until about an hour about two o'clock yeah 1 30 2 o'clock it yeah. was about to fire back off again so we did catch a bunch of fish on a jerk bait read i fished with reed again i bet we caught i don't know 30 40 i who i really don't know um reed caught two at once on one of our places and we would count them every cast on a couple places until we pulled them out of the boat but Man, this place is eat up with those little, I mean. There's plenty of spots in 12, here. 12, 13-inch spots, 14-inch spots. Man, this place is full of them. I mean, it just, the places we were throwing on, you know, four or five years ago and catching, you know, you, we always talk about that infamous winter. I mean, that had three, four, five-pound largemouth on it. And just, I, I don't, that stuff's gone for me. So, it was fun overall. Um, Have you... I got a question about that. Did you catch a lot of spots in the creeks, or was that more main lake ish? Both. Caught them in so the you creeks. Caught them in the creeks. Yep. Caught them in the creeks um, on the main lake, and, and well, and and you could argue pockets are the main lake too, but um, we caught some in pockets too, um, and we caught them up, down, all around, all over the place. Yeah, I, that whole myth of run up the lake to catch the spots, run down the lake, that that's all shot. You know, it used to be, that's five, six years ago we talk about, if you want to catch spot of bass, you can go up the dam and catch them. But now they're, I mean, they're damned to dam. Your your best shot at catching a spot now is around Ebenezer. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot in that area that they tend to hold to. Um, and the spots that are in here right now, I'm not gonna say there's not big ones because there are. I think Britt Myers weighed in. He had big fish in he the had tournament four before. Was four yep. or something, four and change. Um, but man, them little suckers right now are the perfect size to get you hooked. Three ways to Sunday when you're throwing oh. a, when you're throwing a three treble hook jerk bait. Man, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> fish with wire mesh gloves all day. Man, that, that that's one of my biggest fears. I've been hooked a couple times. The the uh, Maybe we should do that tonight. Let me bury a treble hook in your hand and jerk it out with braid since you've never been hooked. I did not prepare for that. Okay. All right. Well, maybe next time. <laughs> give me give me about an eight-hour <laughs> heads up and I'll prepare for it. <laughs> but, um. No, that is what I just, I've not been hooked like that. No, I've been hooked before, but not in that fashion. But, man, those spots, they... They come in, you know, they're all, they're stuck to your jerk bait, right? They got all, they got one hook in their mouth and two down their side. And, and they play possum on you, man. They just lay there. The minute you get one out? Until until you touch them, and then they just go ballistic. Yep. Yep. <laughs> or you get one hook out, and they go haywire. <laughs> Not my most favorite thing by any means. But anyways, so that's enough out of the guy that stunk it up Saturday. So, David, you had, what, 12, 12 and a half pounds? Yeah, it's 12 and a half pounds. And, yeah. Did y'all win big fish, too? No. Um. Uh, I know the guy's face. I can't remember his name. He had a 389 big fish. Okay. I think our big fish was like 314. 
all of our fish which were kind of the same. Which is still really down, right? I mean, what usually yeah. takes in December. No, because it. Well, we, not we haven't broke. We haven't broken into the cold. I mean, yes, yeah. it's gotten cold, but it's not there yet. Um, yes, there's a lot of fish in bait. You know, I don't know who the guy is that made the post on Lake Wiley tips and tricks the night before <laughs> this tournament. But if you wanted to get into Big Allison, that was out because I think everybody saw it and made a mad dash for it. Yeah. Um, we caught fish. From the time we started, it slowed down. The bites were a little bit farther apart. We caught fish all day. Um, a lot of same size fish. Uh, it's just, I, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I can say we're whacking them and people say, oh, you're lying, you're lying. You're, yes, we are. You just have to be in the right area. Right. Um, no, I, I agree. It's we, with you, bait. You, you we got to be them, with the bait. We were catching them, and we weren't catching any. I mean, it wasn't just catch one. See, we can. There, I can. I a whole could bunch go. Or catch none. No, I can run around and catch fish <laughs> continuously. It's just yeah, the size is in the bait. Yeah. If you're in the bait, you're okay. If you're just fishing, you can still catch fish. It's just the size isn't as good. Well, the conditions Saturday were made it tough. I mean, it was slick. High sun, warm, slick, and and it. I mean, every square inch of the lake was covered up with leaves. You could tell they hadn't pulled any water. Um, I mean, yeah. it was it was pretty uh, pretty lackluster conditions to be fishing. But you know, people figured out everybody has to fish the same conditions. So I mean, you you know, people complain about the wind didn't blow the right way or. Or it got too cold, or it was too hot. You can find us a fisherman. We'll we'll find something that or find you a reason why we didn't catch him. But, but there's it, always an excuse. It was not. It was not the most pristine conditions to be fishing. But we all got to go fishing. So and it was for a great cause. I think last year they were telling us they were able to take a hundred kids to Walmart with a hundred bucks and let them actually have a Christmas that they would have never had. So no, last year they. Last year, he took 36 kids. 36 kids, I'm sorry. This year, they're they're taking 80 kids. They raised eight grand. Okay. Plus, had... I think they may have raised a little bit more after the tournament was said and done. I think a couple people gave um, some other donations. Okay. And well, there was a lot more boats in it this year. Y'all did, did a lot better job uh, promoting it. Well, and thank you to Jason Land, Jason Wilson, a bunch of you guys that listen, that come and fish whether you were on fish or not um you know it's it's a good cause yeah so we fished it last year too you're back to back to back nope just back thing. to back okay i didn't the, i didn't fish it the year before yeah so I last didn't know year was it. the first time we fished it too reading i fished it we got one bite last year and it was big fish <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the weight it took last year it was eleven. It actually showed up on my post as eleven something. We, I was gonna say eleven six, eleven seven. Um, Mike Allman and I actually won that together last year. Yeah, we got one bite. It was a four, four and change. Four. That was on. I can't remember how much the four and change pound spot that was worth. Whatever we, we gave the money back. Yeah, or we donated it back. So no, that it's a good cause. I'm glad that. It, I'm glad it turned out this year and yeah. next year I think they're turning it over to the high school team to put together and right. run. That'll I mean, cool. it's still going to be open, but I think they're going to let the high school kids run it. I know Nikki's father's getting up there in age and yeah. I think it's a little bit for him to get, you know, to get it together. It's a lot of work putting that together. Sure. So, Jeff Murray said there's a great tournament upcoming. Jeff, tell us which one you're talking about. I missed some of these comments. Chris wants to stir the pot early. Yep. Well, we need to keep we need to stir the pot so we keep the viewers on here. I'm just I got a splinter in my hand. It's aggravating me. All right. So if you didn't see our event we made today. So this Friday we have the battle for the belt. Twenty four and a half pounds won TBF on Murray. A little over twenty won the cat on Murray. Nice. They're biting down there. Um. <laughs> That must really be biting down there. Well, not really. I mean, that's 20, well, 24 and a half is doing it, but 20 pounds on Murray is pretty normal. 
Yeah, but how many other twenty pound bags were? I don't there? know. Did you see? Did you see Dalton caught a smallmouth? I did see his post. That's legit. He caught it. I mean, I didn't. Yeah, well, I guess that is a plausible theory yeah. there. Did he uh, wait? Was he in the tournament? You know, I, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, so Friday, we will have every former champion of the belt up there. Well, we hope. Jason Land. David Winters, Shane Leinberger, and Joey Sabaga. And we're going to fish right down the road right here. We'll take off at 7. Uh, we will have live updates every 15 minutes. So basically every boat will give an update an hour. And we will weigh in at 3 o'clock. Um, from there, we're going to come straight up here to the parking lot. David's got barbecue. Anything else? We got barbecue. Yeah, we got barbecue. I got to figure out some side options. And some side options. And uh, there will also be an open house here in the store. They was scanning all kinds of inventory when I got, got here this I've afternoon. I've got boxes all around. We're going to um, hope to have it cleaned up, put up, and ready to be sold. And there will be a, I will just say, discounts and fun at the store. I, I don't know if you know exactly what those are yet, but... But there will be some type of incentive to be here. Sun drops. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dave. If you come, I'll have you a case of sun drops. Gaspo, uh, that, yeah, I forgot to send you my house address. Um, that should be picked up tomorrow at the P.O. Box. So come hang out Friday. Is it from, what, 4 to 6, 4 to 7? Yeah, 4 to 6. 4 to whenever? Well, 4 to 6. I got to try to get to the house because we got to get okay. re rigged and re ready for Saturday. All right. Because um, I got to be the bounty Saturday. That's right. So come up here, rub it in for the guys that lost, shake the hand for the guy that won, and get full on homemade smoked barbecue here from the Rusty Hooks Bait and Tackle shop. Yep. Right. So. I'm yeah, and if you guys drive by street. Thursday, don't mind me. I'm just <laughs> smoking meat. We're not on fire. <laughs> Alan Coe says he wants a ditch digger. I see that. Alan, I don't know what color you're looking for. I am waiting on Brian to get my order to me. Seems to be a common theme in the fishing world today. Hard to get stuff. Very hard to get stuff. So the bounty, so... Do they roll it to you guys? Well, so... how did that work? Because Britt won last. So. Britt won last, but Britt did not get back with Lee Lucas. Okay. I don't know what the situation is there. Lee called me in a panic. I, um... That one's the orange one. Okay. I, Alan, I'll pull you on the side when I come in and get in touch with you. Um, so, Rusty was talking about coming over. <laughs> And we were going to go to Norman and fish, but when the bounty opportunity came up, Rusty felt like he wanted to get involved and let everybody that used to fish against him have a shot at him. Yes, he will be with me. Um, whether that's fair or not, I don't know. But Find out of the way in Saturday. Yeah, that's right. And so we get to be the bounty. Um so how does that so how does that work? So there's so so Lee Lee, Lee Lucas XL Challenge, yep. right? He he's running winter trail up here. So the way the bounty works is so there's a there's an initial entry fee. The entry fee. There's a side pot. There's a side pot. And there's a bounty side and pot. And there's a bounty side pot. Okay. It's twenty dollars. Everybody pay. Everybody that wants to pays in. Um, the guys that the bounty is on don't have to pay in. Okay, so you don't pay in. And if you beat everybody you get the bounty money that's right yeah, but if whoever the highest finisher is above us okay takes the money so it's like bonus bucks all right similar or okay. calcutta type deal all right it's fun the bounty it adds a little stress to it if you think about it i think lee lucas should dress up as dog the dog yeah dog the bounty hunter he's not big enough i don't think so no no lee's not big enough for all that fun I really hate Shane's not here so we can really dive into this because that bounty is irrelevant. Friday is relevant. Friday is the big deal. 
I know I haven't jo- seen Jason Lamb pop on here either. So Joey Joey's out of pocket too. He's a uh, he's on a date too. So maybe I should just gone home and gone on a date. What's going on? Shane and Joey are on dates, and we're gonna we're up here holding down the fort. Yeah. Tell you this thing's aggravating me. What do you got? A splinter in there? I got a splinter in here a week ago, and I thought I got it out, and now it's not out. Michael Brendel, how you doing, buddy? Heard the fish were biting in Monticello, which is where he lives now. Uh oh. Yeah, I've never been on that place. Neither have I. Never once. All right, so one v one. Come on, Brandon. You're the promoter. You're like the Don King of this without the hair. Oh well. I know. Me and Cookie are here in Joey's place. Uh, yep, Marshall and Cookie are here. Okay. Well, Marshall started talking smack earlier. All right. So here. So let. So let's. You know what? I think we should let our viewers decide. I think I know what their answer will be. I'm pretty sure I know what their answer is going to be too. But okay. So Shane has posed a problem with the A rig. Because there's this myth running around that the only way I can catch fish and the only way Joey can catch fish are on a rig. So Shane doesn't want the a rig in play. Shane has proposed that the a rig be illegal for the tournament. So do all 58, 59, 60 of you all believe we should fish with it or not? I think they want to see fish catches, so I would think that it would be illegal. That's that's where I am. I mean, it's leaning. a it's a legitimate bait. I mean, I could go say, Brandon, you're not allowed to throw a jerk bait the rest of the winter. How would you feel about that? I probably wouldn't just I'd just stay home. <laughs> I mean, legal first answer. All right, le- the legals win it. <laughs> One to nothing. <laughs> Chris Marshall, come on, you chime in. Let's see what you think. No, nope, this is like overtime. First score wins. <laughs> <laughs> First score wins. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of overtime, how about the... Run what you brung. I like that, too. There you go. Fish with it. Yep. Fish with it. There we go. I don't I don't know if we wouldn't get but just maybe one or two. He's just scared. <laughs> That's what I said. But I also promised Brandon I wouldn't make any demeaning or belittling comments because he's not here to defend himself. Illegal. Chris, caught, you would say that, Chris. He would say that because he thinks that's how we caught him. <laughs> Saturday. Can't beat him, join him. Get beat him, join him. That's right. I hate them. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I have to throw it, too. I'm, I'm not some... Well, obviously, with eight and a half pounds, I'm not hitting anything. But. No, but I'm going to tell you, you fished with me the week before, and you asked me all these questions about the A-Rig, and then you just <laughs> casually pop out, start slinging an A-Rig around, and yeah, don't let Brandon fool y'all. This whole jerkbait myth, I'm not so sure that's not the myth. <laughs> I mean, I got holes in my hand to prove it, so... <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I mean, yes, yeah, so we all catch some fish on jerk bait, but come on now. Treble hook baits technically have six hooks. I mean, he's correct. Mine has nine on it. Yeah, Omega Bass has nine hooks. Complaint I've ever heard that I hate the A-Rig. Sorry, Shane. <laughs> mm. oh. I always depend on Chris Marshall coming in clutch. I know what you were saying, Alan. They at least have six hooks. That is correct. All right, Lee Lucas, thank you for clarifying. Britt gets to hold his bounty spot when he's not quite so busy. Did he go to Florida? I saw some posts today from some of the MLF guys at the Cup. They're headed down there. I, Where he's at? I don't know for sure. Are we I, even allowed to say that? I want to get Britt in trouble. Britt didn't, Britt didn't tell us that. Disclaimer information. I'm just assuming. We're assuming. There you go. You know what they say when you assume. That's right. You make a yeah. you and me. Yep, that's it. There you go. I'll never forget when my grandmother said that to me the first time. That's the first time you heard your grandma cuss? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Gene Bar, Man, Gene, I thought we were friends, buddy. We'd still need a whole bunch more no A-Rig comments to get anywhere close. I mean, 
take this little fella right here and do just as much damage. I'll throw the old ass nine when I need to. Yeah. I I will I will make this statement. People can believe me or they cannot. But the fish have seen a nasty nine enough that you don't have to throw it anymore. I didn't when I fished with you last weekend I just threw a five wire the whole time. And that's right. Mainly because when you're no boating, as I call it, co angling. If you don't lay that nine wire on the front deck, you ain't ever gonna get to fish with anything because your entire rods laying down there will be Ken Nickerson. Up. How about a rig only tournament? <laughs> We're using it, guys. I mean it. I we just we just wanted to poll our viewership to see if there was any. Listen, we'll take we'll take this we'll of, we'll take this back Alabama tomorrow and, and take it in front of Shane and let him see that for me, okay, I, and I'll put the if I'm on live, I'm gonna try to make it so that y'all can see a little bit more about what I was talking about the other night well, with I mean, the A-Rig. That's what we do this for, right? I mean, we go live to, for for you guys to watch. It's it's not. I mean, don't get me wrong. Everybody wants a cardboard tin foil belt to say that it's theirs, but. You know, it gives people something to watch and tune into and get excited about. I mean, that's 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 what we're doing, right? Right. Nobody seems really excited on here tonight, though. It's kind of blah. Come on now, let's fire. We we need something to fire this thing up. Well, I'm just saying, you guys fish live for for the viewers to watch. That's right. Correct? Do it for the fans. That's right. If they are fans. Or get on there and heckle whatever we whatever they are. Well, I've I've I made a comment to somebody Saturday evening that if I can get to the fourteen pound mark by nine thirty or ten o'clock, I'm driving around. I'm gonna go <laughs> find some people. <laughs> well, I've heard that there might be some people coming down to heckle already. So let them come. So if you want to come, taking off right over here, at Buster Boyd. At seven o'clock, Ronnie Mueller, oh, that's the goal. Now, looking at the weather Friday, it looks like it could be a very good day. I was gonna say, if it rains a little bit and the wind blows, that's not necessarily bad in the winter time. <laughs> Alan Co, if you think that was fish caught last week at High Rock, I think Friday will be. I think Friday will be a little bit more to watch. I think I'm behind you. I'm not getting them as fast as you. Well, when you have the control panel. I was going to say, man, you, you the man. I haven't sat behind that in a couple of weeks now. I'll let you have it. Nope. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like I don't like being in control. I don't. Even when I had to ride around with Shane and Bono the other day, I don't. That was not fun for me. Like, there was so much that I wanted to do, but I couldn't. So guys, I'm, I made a post in our uh, um, in the event to try to get you guys to like, laugh, love, whatever it is with reaction. Are they called emojis? Is that what they're called? Emojis? Yeah. I don't reaction it, things. Yes, reactions. There you go. Um, Gene Webster, you see a rig in action win. every time you fish. Don't don't even come to don't even come at that. I thought y'all went live to see if you could get us people working fire trying to watch. <laughs> Listen, Duke Coon, Duke Coon knows all about that bounty thing. He he was like poster child for the bounty last year in that XL throughout the year. Duke, we gotta we gotta do something to get you motivated at work. I'll take Friday off. Stay at High Rock. <laughs> It does for weight, I'll tell you that for sure. <laughs> Man. I'm not going to lie, I had fun Saturday. I had a lot of fun Saturday. I caught them the way I wanted to catch them, and I caught a whole bunch of them. How about a wide-angle view Friday? How about wide-angle view Friday? I don't think, I don't know. If, I think you got to start the video that way. We tried that. You talking about turning the phone sideways? Yeah, when you start the video, you start it. I don't know. We'll see what we can come up with. I don't know. Some of these places that, that Shane's going to go to, I, so I think I'm with Shane. It's not, not completely finalized yet, but I believe I'm his cameraman. 
Um, I think I'm going to go without a cameraman. I think I'm going to have to lay down on the front deck and film up. So I can't, you can't see anything. Okay. <laughs> I protect all my holes. I got to show them. Oh, oh. Wow, you went there. Well, I what, wasn't even. That's what get. all the arguments over, right? So I can't go to any. I can't go with anybody. <sighs> no, I'm yes. just gonna leave. I've already told everybody where to go and what they need to do. If, if you know, I if you guys want, never mind. Whatever, Marshall. I think Cookie's coming. Cookie's on here. I'm pretty sure it's Joey. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure Cookie is going with Joey. Graph screenshots. I can do that. Jeff Murray, you can screenshot my graph till the cows come home. The information is only as good as the person knows how to use it. Land's on here, too. All right. I can go with Jason. I thought Jason couldn't make it. He didn't say that. He said he might not be able to make it. I mean, Chris, you, you don't need to practice at Murray. I figured you'd come up here anyway. I may have I may have a cameraman that I was gonna say David David's working this real good and focus everybody on everybody else. David hadn't unveiled who his cameraman is. Nope. Nope. And I won't know for sure until Thursday. Everybody's complaining about me, but I don't know why. <laughs> I can tell you this. My cameraman will not help me. Whatever. No, I don't. I don't want the help. Because really, at the end of the day, guys that feel like they need help, why are you fishing? David may catch twenty pounds. That's right, Jody. Anybody might catch twenty pounds. We're going fishing. I mean, it. Everybody says Wiley's dead. Wiley's not. Is it in the shape it was? No. Is it dead? No. Uh. Jeff Murray, so I'll put a little bit out there on that forward-facing sonar and A-rig hookups. Um, I just re-rigged my boat today, this morning. Um, took me two hours and 15 minutes. I added a Mega Live. I ran a C-Clear wiring harness. No A-rig. And <laughs> read. And um, so I've got everything set up, but... There's already been a debate on whether I should be allowed to go out Thursday and practice or not. For me, I want to go see if I can figure this live out. Otherwise, I'm going to be figuring that out Friday as well as fishing. Unless Brandon can take my boat and dial it in for me. I got too much work this week. Yep. Friday's, so. Friday's too hard for me to swing or hard enough for me to swing taking vacation. Chris Marshall, I know Wiley's dead for all you guys that saw the heyday, but as far as when I say dead, it's not lifeless. You catch fish, it just you don't catch any weight. Yet. Jeff, David, you can get practice. Uh, Jeff, I, tell it. I don't necessarily want to practice, Jeff. I'm good. I'm good with what I got. I'm, I'm good with the, what I know about the lake. I'm good with I'm not worried about going out there and practicing. I'm not getting any of those comments. What's going on here? Day, uh, Round Man was asking me about that earlier today. He said sometimes it blips out. So I'm getting yeah, yeah. So the last one I got, I don't have any from Jeff. Well, just pay attention on here. Okay. That and honestly, I gotta I gotta work on some barbecue Thursday. Jeff, did that answer your question? I, I don't know what you were asking about, talking about. He wants to see some forward-facing sonar stuff on live. On live, okay. Yes. We could probably do that. I think everybody's got forward-facing sonar. Does Land, do you have forward-facing sonar? I know Joey, Sh David's got I know Shane has. He's sponsored by Garmin. Yes, all good, okay. So I get, see, see, I got that one. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Well, it's not more so about learning it. It's more so making sure I got it set up. Jason right. Land does not have it. All right. 
Uh, that'll be the next thing. We can't use our live. Nah, Jason Lamb will. He won't. He wouldn't say that. No, Jason's pretty cool, dude. We'll bring some animations. I'll bring some goldfish snacks and lay them on us. <laughs> Tape them to his crap. Yeah. Play with them like I do with my kids. Listen, I don't know about. I still eat goldfish. Well, shoot, yeah, man. My dogs eat them too, off the floor. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you got young kids. The biggest problem we got to deal with is grapes. Keeping the labs away from the grapes. Yeah. When one drops, it's a mad dash to see who gets there first. That's right. Bring some bear claws. Rusty Hooks Live is commenting. Is that Shane? No, Todd and Todd Hammond. Is he still admin? Uh, it looks <laughs> like it. <Jeez. laughs> I didn't make him admin. You all did. You did. No, I didn't even do that because I wasn't there. Bring some bear claws. Hmm. Todd probably didn't even know he was still admin. No. That's not good then out of your nose. <laughs> no, that's really not good. He says president. President. <laughs> oh, my word. All right. So, J- Jason Lamb made a comment. I'd like to see his logic behind. What do you say? Uh, rain on Lake Wiley. Rig won't play. So, you know, I used to think that stuff, too, because I can't ever catch him on it, but Shane LaHue used to come down here when it would rain mm-hmm. and mop every – him and him and his dad would come down here and mop the floor with all of us. They'd just show up and catch 21, 22 pounds. <laughs> yeah, but that's before – that's before people really started figuring out what kind of places to throw that rig at. I guess. Obviously, he knew what he was doing. <laughs> oh, he yeah. Well, when you create the version that you throw, you you tend to be that way. Yeah. All right, we got another a rig allowed comments. That's like five to one. I don't think I don't think the no a rig squad's going to recover from that. No. Tim's on here. What's up, Tim? I miss you. I missed you swinging, sneaking in on us. You got that one. Trying to look up the weather. Try to see if it's really going to be like. There's like a 20% chance of rain. They don't 40, know. 45 in the morning, warm up to 65. Prefrontal. This wind, this weekend, the wind's really supposed to blow. It's it, Saturday is going to be a good day. Except for I don't like that high. Weight prediction 12 pounds. One man deal. I don't know, man. If it rains tomorrow, there might be some color in the water. 12 pounds. I'm going to pull some water. I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going to say it's going to take 13 and a half. Okay. I like that. 15 Big. pounds. Rusty Hook's life says <laughs> 7.83 pounds. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to uh, see if I can strip him. No, nah, <laughs> leave him on there. It's fine. <laughs> Tim, we're talking about Wiley. So, Friday we got our uh, battle for the belt. Yep. Friday, Greg, the wind is going to be light and variable, which is going to stink. He wants to know which way is it blowing. He's deer hunting. It's light and variable on Friday. Oh. Saturday, south, southwest. Now, if you really want to catch him, Saturday's the day. Yeah. I might go to Lake Norman and just go have fun. There you Saturday. go. Reed's going to Murray with Mr. Wicker, not Andy. Uh, Jeff Murray, no, no, DNR off limits are the only off limits. I mean, if J- Shane wants to try to jump the water wall in the South Fork and go up in the South Fork River, feel free. Well, it'll be dirty up there. If it rains tomorrow, it'll be dirty up there. Potentially. <laughs> How sketchy does Norman get with 10 to 20? Not very. Uh... I mean, it's not bad. I mean, you're going to get you some fit, rollers. You, Tim, you can't you run fish wide it, open. You but. fish at Murray. It gets nowhere near what Murray does with 10 to 20. Yeah. All right. I'll so, tell you this. If it's going to blow on Saturday, they will bite on Norman on Saturday. Yes, they will. And they'll Stop. bite down here, too. <laughs> All right. So, you want to get in our tech tip talk of the week? There's a thing? lot. There's a lot of tease in that. 
Sounded good, didn't it? I mean, I guess. Tech tip. Is that onomatopoeia? What is that? I don't know. You're asking Never mind. Sorry. the wrong guy. Wrong person. It's only supposed to rain a little bit Wednesday, a little bit on Friday, and a lot Saturday. Yeah, it's going to rain. Saturday's going to rain. I ain't going then. I'll sit my butt at home. Oh, well. Fair weather. Listen, I wouldn't go if I didn't. I mean, cloudy with a few showers, thunder possible. Yeah. Ain't going to be that bad. All right, so we got laying up here on this table. We have jig heads since A rigs and swim baits and grubs and whatever bait profiled when i say bait i mean bait fish soft plastic profiled stuff is seems to be what everybody's talking about uh randy loman i have the app called windy w-i-n-d-y and it is about the best thing for wind i've ever seen what the heck was that i have no earthly idea somebody just get shot outside I don't know. All right. Who are the wrestler names? I think we'll save that till Friday. Do you know who all of them are? No. Okay. Like, so I'm not. I mean, I know one of them's from a movie. It's not even a wrestler. It's not. One of them's from Big, or I'm sorry, from Billy, Billy Madison. Madison. Yes. And I, the other three I are got real stuck wrestlers. With that one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. The other three are real wrestlers. I just, I mean, I would have been okay with Butterbean. <laughs> no clue what I'm doing with it yet other than drop it down on them and don't move it Tim the Dominican rig's hard to fish when it's real windy I will tell you that yeah and it's very hard to keep it under your boat um, alright so these jig heads we got here so we got an underspin I know it's going to be hard to see but we got an underspin that is a horse-headed style. That's not a horse-headed style. Well, I'm sorry. Originally, it was a horse-headed style. Yeah. That is not a horse-headed style. You are correct. No. Um, it does have a 90-degree hook in it, so that's the where the line tie uh, has a 90-degree angle in it from the shaft of the, of the hook. So that's one we're going to talk about. We have a probably most common old-school ball-headed jig. It's been around for... I think since the invention of jig heads. Um, yes. Same deal, 90 degree hook. We have a uh, True South bullet head jig here. It has a screw on the shank. And this is the one, that's, it's a little bit different. It actually has a 60 degree hook in it. I'm, I know you guys can't see this, it's too far away. Uh, and then we have probably the one of the other most common ones around here, which is a darter head. So it's a very, it's a cone shaped jig head. Um, with a 90 degree hook in it as well so if you had one of these which one which one would you select I know I have mine which if one? I if I could only fish one <laughs> yep most versatile would be the ball head you think the ball head I think I really think the ball head would be for me the most versatile so for me and this is for we're talking about swim baits right Single hook swim baits. Um, I would I would pick I would choose a darter head. That's the one I have the most confidence in. That's the one I grew up throwing. If I'm reeling something, that darter head, uh, you, know, you put it on a, a little dipper or a swim minnow or the rusty hooks minnow up here. Um, I believe when the way it comes to the water really helps the bait rock. Yep. When it swims, um, and I'm a big believer in the 90 degree hook. So it gets your line away from the jig, the lead. And it, it's almost, in my mind, okay, this could be completely wrong, but in my mind, it's the whole theory between tying a loop knot, right? So the farther your line tie is, a far, is away from the meat of the bait, the more action that it can have. I'm not going to say it will have, depending on how the bait swims, but but that's that's what I like to throw. Yep. Okay. Now, the ball head, to me, got plenty of fish on a ball head, not saying it doesn't work. Um it's more of just a dead straight back pull you know the tail's gonna kick but you're not gonna get much body action no well depends on what you put behind it okay 
what, what do you mean? You got some baits over there. So, so the other two, all right. So um, this has become real popular. You know, the biggest complaint you get out of any of these other two jig heads we're talking about is they have a collar on them, right? And basically, you take your bait, you push it up there, and after about the third time you push it up there, you got to take it off and throw it away. Yep. Right? That's a fact. Um, and if you fish Kai Tex, it's good for one bite, and that's, right. that's the end of it. Um, a lot of guys use super glue to hold them up there. That works, too. For a little um, while. Don't, whatever you do, don't get the gel. You want the, you know, you get it on your fingers and stick them together, and they're stuck. That's that's the super glue that you want. Um because the gel, it's something about that, and water, it never cures. It just, you might as well just not even use it. No. Um, but with the screw lock, which has become very popular, um, which, you know, True South, or I guess technically Biz Baits by True South, or True South by Biz Baits now, um, they start putting these, these uh, screw locks on the shank of the hook, and uh, I started using these this year I guess maybe I've used them a couple times and you do not go through swim baits the way you do with other the, what happens to these is you catch fish on them and the hook pulls out of the body of it and the head will still be on attached uh, it'll still be attached Let's so see that it, it really saves your baits so store point of view for all you guys that come in here ask for darter heads this is what I'm going to try to sell you now because darter heads are a hard to get i.e. I have to sit down and pour them because I don't have anybody to pour them. I'll say the ones you're pouring are really pretty. They're really shiny. Um, and they, I mean, these are these are the new deal. They work with a grub, a swim bait. I mean, you can do a lot with this. It's kind of a happy medium between a darter head and, and a... It, and it, it can double as a head. head rig. I guess it could. It yeah. can double as a head rig. Um, so the other two we talked about the darter head and the ball head they have and even the underspan it has weight on the shank of the hook yep where your screw lock Does has not. it all in the in the head of the jig or actually completely out of the bait itself so there it you get a you do get a lot more uh head forward nose forward whatever you want to call it action so Vertically, it will change a lot. You drop your rod tip, it's going to fall a lot faster than these other ones. Well, this that's what the ball head for me. I like it because it will drop straight down quicker. Sure. This will kind of more, you know, it'll dive, but it's just, it's a flatter plane. Yeah. So the baits, that, well, this underspin. So I don't know much. I'm not going to sit here and act like I do. I call this a horse head. It's definitely not a horse head. Um, but the, uh, the underspin, I don't. I don't have much success with. I know the guys on Lake Murray. I mean, it's one a classic down there, right? Um, and yeah. the Lake Hartwell. Uh, it's one. It's won Hartwell. some tournaments. It's out won here. a bunch of money. It's won some tournaments out here too. Yeah. Um, I don't know who gets credit for making it popular. I Casey know, Ashley. I know it went crazy when Casey Ashley won everything. Um. But. Uh, but this bait, I when I throw it, it's when the fish are either on the bottom or really close to the bottom. Down deep. Down deep. Jody, These other ones I'm, I'm throwing. Line size on a grub. Um, you ask four different people and you'll get three different answers. Some guys say eight, some guys say ten, some guys say twelve. I throw twelve. I, I throw... 10 or 12. So are you a bait caster or a spinning rod guy? Both. Both? Both, depending on what, when and how. All right, so so explain that then. Because I'm bait caster all the way. I'm a bait caster all the way. And all the old school grub guys are. But a spinning rod, when it gets really cold, I can take a 16th ounce head on a spinning rod and I can throw it out there and just close the bale and hold it. And let it swing back to the boat, and it catches all the water columns. Okay. And, you know, yes, I'll pick up on it. Yes, I may wind it, but when the water gets really cold, all the shad are doing is dying. They're not really surviving. You know, so when you say really cold, then shad kill, it starts like 46, 43, 45, Well, when I, when I start doing that, it's low, like low 30s, low 40s, upper 30s. We haven't seen that in years here. I wish it wouldn't get that cold. Yeah. 
Chris, you are right. Amart did make it. I guess that's the first I heard of it, and that was in the summertime, right here on Buster Boy Bridge. Was that 2004? Mm-hmm. He almost won the whole tournament. Just goes to show you don't have to leave the bridge to catch fish. Talk got talk talk a hero, relive that. He caught two big ones on two casts with two minutes to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a lay down, oh, in a lay down in the river that don't exist anymore. Yeah, that thing's rotted away or pulled out. Well, I think they pulled it out, all the new stuff up the river. I think it's gone. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I think this type of fishing will be a big player this weekend, as opposed to the A rig. So why why do you think that happens? So so why I mean why you know why do they get off the A rig? Why they get on a single swim bait or vice versa? I think the versatility of a single swim bait, you have a lot more options. In the, in the sense that right now the water's not cold. That's not. Okay, yes, it's cold to us. 52 degrees in the mornings is cold to us. But to the fish, they're still chasing. You see it on your live scope. You throw at something you see, and by the time you get it there, it's 50 yeah. feet away. That's what I was telling you. I yeah. live scoped a bunch of fish, but by the time I got my jerk bait, which is a slow-moving bait, to them, they're, I mean, they're gone, gone. I, this gives you the ability to make rapid moves. Okay. I you can fish that. it slow, but yet still fish it fast. So that's why you would say this is working now. As opposed to an A rig, but which it's going is to transition to an A rig, the colder it gets. Uh, you still catch fish on A rig right now. Don't get me wrong. It's just what I saw this weekend. Yes, you can be efficient with an A rig, but the grub is a lot better as yeah. far as catching fish. Man, it's fun to catch them on it too. It is <laughs> when it, when you get that just the tick. And you just lean into them, and they're there, and they're stuck. I mean, our biggest fish Saturday, and I, I caught it on a single swim bait, just a white single swim bait on um, this head. Which is the round The round, round head. I mean, I threw it out there, and I'm fishing it back to the boat. It just goes tick, and I lean into it. When I leaned into it, I made two turns, and the fish jumped straight in the air. And, That's how you know it's warm if they're still jumping. Yeah, and it's like, okay, these fish are still chasing. Um, so, so how about weight size? So, if I had one to pick, it'd be single headed. It'd be eighth ounce across the board. I'm not talking about the underspin. No, the underspin's a whole different ball of wax. That. I can't just narrow it to one. All right, we got 16th, 8th ounce. You ever throw a 3 16th? I throw a 3 16th and 8th a lot. A 16th okay. strictly when it gets really cold. Okay. Um, I like a 3 16th. I like an 8th. It just depends on what line size and how deep I'm trying to fish. So the deeper it is, the lighter line and heavier? No, actually, it's it's not. I, I throw a 12-pound with 3 16th ounce. And that's what I throw deeper. Okay. And for fish that are shallower, I throw the eighth ounce and ten pound test. I I know that's kind of backwards, but I feel like if I'm gonna set the hook in a, in a on a fish in twenty five foot of water, I want to have as much line as I can, weight wise, you know, pound test, so that I can set the hook and not worry about the snap set. Gotcha. 10 pound test is more like a lean into it and, and well, the, good, the good thing about fishing for these suspended fish is they don't have where to go right I mean when you get one on unless you're around brush unless you're around but brush if, but if you're fishing strictly bait in the creek channel when you get one on I mean they can go wherever they want yeah no <laughs> and, and yes it, it is bait in the creek channel but I, so I was telling somebody yesterday might have been telling you yesterday. All you got to do is drive around, find the bait, and then fish everything you see around the bait. You can find the fish. Bass don't, yes, they swim free and roam, but they like to ambush too. Outside of the morning bite, absolutely. Whether it's a side of a point, a brush pile, a stump, a rock, 
a boulder the size of this table if you know where any of those are there's there's all kinds of places to throw this stuff yeah i agree with jay though when a bait's not thrown for a while it makes a comeback i agree it's like they forget about it so I, it's more or, realistic either that or they uh the new ones just aren't dumb enough to know about it yet or smart enough i guess i should say no i i, I don't know Fishing bait is a technique. We can sit here and talk about it till the cows come home, but it takes a lot of patience. It's yeah. Well, you have you also have to be able to read it and know when to stay and when to go. That's the hardest thing to do because the fish swim or are constantly moving in it. So it's... yeah, but if you get bait stuck in an area the size of the store, that's, you, that's you know you, you yeah. can stay. Oh, you mean, okay, yeah, stuck in the side of this area. I understand. I understand. If, if they're only talking, moving in a small it. area, yeah. you can stay with them. But if they're moving a quarter mile in and out, you can't, you can't efficiently fish those fish. Yeah, I thought you meant if you find a bait ball the size of this room. No, I'm running as far away from that as yeah. I can. I don't like it when it's big. No. When I it's like all broken see, up. I like to see the little pods broken up. That means fish have yeah. shaved them off. Kind of like. Crowder Saturday morning, you saw it. I yep. mean, you fish were feeding in there. Anyway, anybody got any more questions about the uh, single swim bait technique? So, so back to the bait caster thing. The reason that I like a bait caster is because a bait caster, when you reel it, is a lot smoother. Yes. And in the wintertime, the slightest movement is what, I don't want to say triggers a fish, but looks most natural because bait fish move very little when they're trying to swim in cold water. Where a spinning rod, if you, I mean, if you just look at the first guide when you're, when you're winding a spinning rod, your bait is going to, to pump or pulse or whatever you want to call it when you're winding it back. Yes. So that that's my theory on the bait caster versus spinning rod. Um, so Tim, there are there are specials we didn't bring you over here, but David has has a bunch of jig heads over there that are actually meant to be rigged weedless. I think the most popular one that's been out forever is the old slider head. Yeah. Um, basically, it's a worm hook. You know, standard with a built-in shank worm hook with a with weight on the front of it, but they are made that way. Um, I can tell you this too: it, it's amazing how if you do have live scope, it's amazing how little you get hung up when you have it because <laughs> you can see. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have that benefit. I I have the fish by braille. I mean, you and I fished the other week. You and do have you have it now. You're I, going to see. I throw I throw a rig in around some stuff that uh, you're not supposed to, and you know Brandon, would you rig it weedless ever? No, I don't, because if fish breathes on my a rig, nine times out of ten he's stuck. Yeah, I mean I, I just I feel I can feel the line why I fish braid. I can feel the line when it hits the brush. I know when to speed up. I know when to pause. It's just it's a feel it's a feel bite. Billy J brings up an old school one. The old, the old belly weighted egg worked good for weedless. It sure does. You can take that and crimp it on the bend of your hook. Mm-hmm. You can weight any hook you want. Yep. I think Seville made something there for a while. Some kind of system you could put on there. Remember that? It was like tungsten putty or something. Did you never see that? I not. I did not. And obviously never. Where really did took his off. comment go? I don't know. It's still on here. Did you not get that one? It, it popped up and then it popped away. I don't know. Maybe he deleted it. Maybe Todd deleted it. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, that's huh. odd. It's kind of boring talking about swim baits or jig heads. So, and it's boring because we don't have any competitors here to really yeah talk the one v one up. Chris Marshall was supposed to be the liaison, and he went 
Where'd he go? Uh, he's here. He's just we mean liaison. Sleep, sleep. Is he's he the one for, that's going to start up? He was supposed to. He said he was. I don't know. I know this. Chris came down to practice for Sabago. What? What is? Sabago seen send me pictures of a menu. Oh boy. Uh, Jake Adams, I cannot say that I fish a grub weedless on the bottom. Does my grub get to the bottom? Yes, from time to time it does, but I don't rig it weedless. <laughs> Sam cameraman. Uh, Todd, I believe it's going to be cooking. Daniel Cook, he's on here, um, or he was on here. See ya. I believe that's who it's going to be. Nineteen pounds on Clark Hill, man! All those herring lakes are popping off. They will when that water temperature gets down. Man, I wish we had herring. No, I don't. Never we, mind. we don't. We don't have a lot of herring stuff here. No. Do you throw the spoon on those fish? I could kick him really, really hard right now. Why? It's a good question. Um. If fish are on the bottom relating to something, you can throw a spoon on them. If uh, if they're just sitting in a gut, I've never had any success catching it. Even in a creek channel, I've never had much success catching them just dropping on their heads. So we don't have any spoons over here. Um there is a couple there special are spoons to do that with. Thousands of sp different spoons. Um, I think the one that Jason Quinn probably made the most popular on this lake is the old Hopkins smoothie, right? Um, yep. So, would you say that on these fish on the bottom, are you throwing more? That's a lie. I'm not sure what he means by that. Um, I don't know. Would you say more of a jigging spoon or a flutter spoon? I don't. I've not messed with a flutter spoon this time of year. I mean, it's it's more of a sit over top of them and drop yeah, on their right. head kind of thing. I don't really. I don't know a ton about a spoon, except when I'm perch fishing. It's the same with the thing. the kids. Same thing. You just drop it down and hope it's a largemouth, not a perch. Yeah. I'm going to catch a bunch of those. Sometimes a catfish will tug and on catfish it. catfish, too. I mean. That, this right here will catch you a catfish. So will a jerkbait. <laughs> so will a Avery. You know, see, I haven't... Have not had that problem yet this year. Not yet. When it gets colder, you will. Uh, well, Shane caught a... The other weekend he was down here with me, and he caught a, I don't know, six, seven-pound channel cat. Todd Hammond. Yeah, we know you like to eat with a spoon. Oh, Todd. Now he's on his page. What he can't make up his mind tonight. There's a flag next to it. Does that mean he's been reported? No. I don't know what that means. Follow Rusty Hooks to earn this badge. He's a follower, man. Oh, okay. That's good. Nice. <laughs> Versatile. Todd's got one of Todd's got one of them fake profiles called Rusty Hooks Live. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think the fake profile thing's kind of played out. I haven't seen him in a while. Oh, man. I'm going to get on here now. Uh, let him come. All right. I'm 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 running out of you, things to you're, talk about. You're running out of gas? So Friday's our biggest deal, right? Again, we got a four, one v one v one v one right? I guess it's a four-man tournament. That's what it is. Yep. Um, we'll have camera camera people in every boat uh, and updates every 15 minutes. Who's who's going first? I don't know. Who you want to go first? We got to figure out who's going to drive the farthest. I don't know that anybody knows that. Uh, well, the first one's going to be from the parking lot. Yeah. And then we'll have to figure out who goes on at 7.15. I don't know. 
Chris. You just told on your bosses on here. <laughs> Would they have a... Uh, Tim Kelly, I'm waiting on Shane to quit being scared. He said something about going to Burton, and I don't know what the hold up there is. I know this Christmas holiday is coming, and um, I got some time off for him Christmas. It's yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm sure we'll work. I can't do it around Christmas. We got inventory. In January, man. That's when they start getting real big. I might just yield my challenge and let Tim do it. and I don't know. I got to talk to Shane and figure it out. Speaking of fake profile, happy birthday, Kyle. <laughs> wow. It stays with his birthday? Yeah, I've, I've seen it floating around on Facebook. He doesn't talk to me anymore. But say, happy birthday, Kyle. I didn't yep. know it was your birthday. Happy birthday, Kyle. I don't even know if he still even tunes in from time to time. Anyway, so Friday, big day. Yeah. Trying to figure out what the winner's going to get. Might be a special belt there involved. Dave was talking about maybe some more kids involved in getting that made. But the big thing for all, for everybody, is open house here at the store. Come by and get your barbecue sandwich. David's going to be smoking all day Thursday and into, I guess, early morning of Friday. No. No, no. I'm a, I've got a plan. Okay, he's got a plan. We're going to see how it works. Maybe we can clear out an aisle and set up some cornhole boards too. What do you think? Mm, maybe set up cornhole boards out front. All right. Or outside. I don't Speaking know. of that, you know, Cole Huskins and I are still undefeated in the only inaugural, first ever inaugural Rusty Hooks bait and tackle shop cornhole tournament. Well, that was back when it was fun. Then everybody got salty. Well, I'm just saying that was back when Cole had neck surgery and we still kicked everybody's butt. Did he have neck surgery? Yes, he did. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. About time for a rematch? With Against who? I, I guarantee you there's at least four or five teams out of the 46 people that are on here that play cornhole and within driving distance. My father will probably be lurking around. I'm sure you get him to throw a cornhole bag. Tom Yak, we will not be providing beer, but feel free to BYOB. Yep, that's correct. I cannot take on the responsibility of anybody's poor choices. David is not allowed to do that as a shop owner without a liquor license. That is a factual statement. So, what y'all do is on y'all. Jeff Walls is going to bring us some drinks. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, very much. I did not I did not realize that last load of drinks would get absorbed as quick as they did, but uh, we are very appreciative. You might need to bring uh, Shane some of the special fruit waters. Fruit waters? Yeah. Propel? Something. 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 He, need, he, need, he needs a... Scott have neck surgery. <laughs> Did you see his picture? I yes, I so saw his picture. Supposedly he had three sweatshirts on. On Saturday? That was Sunday, wasn't it? It was seventy two degrees. Hey man, Sunday. I don't know. Wearing shorts and T shirts. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't in shorts. I, I wore my bibs and coat in the morning and I had shorts and a T shirt on underneath that. Well we well when I weighed in Saturday I was shorts and a golf shirt. Yeah. Uh I don't know what happened to Scott Hamrick. I saw that picture. I sent it to a select group of people, circled the lack of neckline, and told them, don't let Scott ever say another word to them about no neck. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, thank you, Jeff. We much appreciate your your uh, contributions to our podcast. Thank you very much. Yes. And thank you to everybody that tunes in every week. Yep. Absolutely. We wouldn't do this if it wasn't for you guys. We'll be doing Friday if it wasn't for you guys. So I want to see I want to see everybody watching show up at the store, buy you something, eat you some barbecue. I I I've got three butts. That's all my smoker can handle. So when it's gone, it's gone. But it should be ready to go somewhere around four. Okay. And we'll go until every until people quit coming. Sounds good.
I may try. Fun. I may try to drag. Get my wife to come up here. You never know. You don't know. Mine might be here too. I don't know. She's pregnant. Yeah. Well, you never know. <laughs> All right, guys. We're gonna wrap this up tonight. Rusty hooks live. Where our hooks may be rusty, but our points are always sharp. Check out the website for. All the wintertime stuff, plus the new stuff in the boxes all around me that will be going up uh, mostly tomorrow. Because Wednesday is going to be cleanup day, and Thursday is going to be smoke barbecue and try to sneak out on the lake without being seen. And Friday is going to be get after it. We well, can't say go sneak out there and not be seen when you tell everybody you're going out there. I may or may not. All right. You never know. Fair enough. I know where there might be a John boat I can go jump in for a few minutes. Yeah, but you just need to go make sure that live site thing or whatever it's called, Mega Live works for you. I, no, I don't. I need to wait until I get some technical support from the from in-house me. guru to help me. <laughs> I mean, I know I hooked it up right. Does it power on? I heard it clicking. Okay, then it work. it's working. So, we'll see. All right, don't forget it's Friday, 7 o'clock, right here, Learn Rusty Hooks Live. Sad Fishing YouTube versus Jason Land versus David Winters versus Shane Langer, Lineberger, Professional Fisherman, I think is what his page is called. Yep, it is. Where it's going down. It Might should not be not catch fun. any fish, but there's going to be lots of trash talking. No. no. We're going to catch fish. They're biting. We'll catch fish. They're biting. Somebody, somebody, we just need to get Jason Land and Joey to listen. That's all. Jeff, that'd be great if you can come up. All right, guys, uh, we're going to sign it out for tonight and see you guys, I guess, Friday. Friday. You never know. We might get a little quick blip live with Shane tomorrow. Let him have his say. Yeah, I get him on here. I think you should interview him. That's what we should do this week. <laughs> FaceTime everybody, interview him one at a time and post it. I'm here. All right. Shane's here. We'll set it up. All right. See you guys later this week. Friday.